This is about the impact this book has had in Australia. And apparently there is more feeling now towards than becoming a republic. Is that a surprise for you? No, but it's marginal. You're talking of, what is it, 5% shift, no more. Well, if it's 5% this year, 5% next year, 5%, if they carry on like this... The, yes, but do, do you know what? It's a matter for the Australians. And when I say that, I'm just repeating what the Queen said. Mm. So it must be... The late Queen. So it must be right. Um, Australia is an offshoot of Britain, as was uh, once upon a time America. America took a decision rather dramatically to get rid of the monarchy. Canada, Australia, New Zealand took the other decision to keep it and to retain this, this sort of um, almost a kind of... Uh, what is it? An umbilical cord mm. relationship with Britain. But it's weakening, inevitably. Yeah. Um, and, well, and, inevitably at the hands of Harry and Meghan causing trouble or just... Well, I think, it, I think it will weak, it weaken and it should weaken. Right. Um, and I think that the Queen's obsession, and I would actually say that, with the Commonwealth in many ways turned out into a mistake. It's, and certainly what Charles should be doing is focusing much more back home. Our crisis is, is here mm -hmm. in England, with, in, in Britain, with, with the way our government is working. But to return for the brief moment to Harry, I mean, what Harry and Meghan do is represent exactly what we were talking about in our first segment, or at least what I was talking about in the first segment. They represent the world of me. They represent the world of, of this wonderful fashion of diversity, inclusion and equality, otherwise known as die. Um, uh, it kills every single thing it touches. Every well, it's, they are the worst of that modern narcissistic mindset, isn't it, of a, of a rather pampered West and a rather pampered generation that have never known real hardship. Johnny, is that a bit harsh? A bit, Harry, you know Harry a little bit. Um, I, I'm, I've met him about three times through my charity work and um, not, not for a, a fair few years, this is sort of ten, ten five years ago. Um, and he was lovely. He was an absolutely delightful young man, uh, very approachable, very down to earth. I, I'm just hugely saddened by it because clearly he has issues that, you know, that go very deep that perhaps none of us were really truly aware of. And he's lashing out in a way that I know, in my heart, I feel he, he's going to regret. But, you know, trashing your family in a public and forum. But there are two Harrys, aren't there? There are two Harrys. There's the Harry you knew and the Harry that's been taken over by Meghan. I mean, Harry is a convert to the new religion of woke. The person who converted him is Meghan. You always need a priest or a priestess if you convert somebody, and she's converted him. And the poor lad, of course, is too stupid to be converted. I mean, he's basically very stupid. He's nice but stupid, <laughs> um, as we all know, and which is why the army was... Which, really is why, think, which, which is why I never do anything else, which is why the army was so good for him. The army takes, you know, young, young, basically decent disposition, but not very bright boys, of every class, many of the officers of class, and it puts them into that, that fruitful discipline that we were saying the police mm. now like. But to go back to Australia... I don't think, he, I don't think we can blame Megan. We can't blame Megan entirely. If you see him doing his interviews for Spare, she wasn't there pulling the strings. That was all straight from him, you know, it was all him. But listen,